It's now time for member statements. The member for Prince Edward Hastings. Thank you, Speaker. Enough is enough. Mr. Speaker, last week the constituents in my riding got news that 162 positions are being cut from Quinney Healthcare. Oh. That's 162 job cuts that are affecting Belleville General, Trenton Memorial, and Prince Edward County Memorial Hospital, but most significantly cuts that will affect the lives of thousands of patients and their families in the region. The 162 job losses at our hospitals include some of the most vital frontline workers, such as registered practical nurses, but extend to those who help the hospital run day to day, such as maintenance workers. As the Ontario Nurses Association Vice President Vicki McKenna stated, reducing in emergency departments puts patients at risk and that similar models have been tried elsewhere with disastrous effects. It's obvious that these cuts will have a negative impact on patients every day. Hundreds rely on the high level of quality care that our hardworking nurses provide to the most vulnerable and those in need. Last year, Quinney Healthcare received an approval rating of 99.9% .9 for its quality of care, but with further staff cuts, it's hard to imagine how care will ever improve at Trenton, Belleville, or Prince Edward County when this government is cutting jobs for people who deal with patients every day. For the last couple of years, we've seen cut after cut after cut forced onto local health care by this government. Eventually, we're going to have to ask, how much more can our community give? How much more can our hospitals give? How much more of Prince Edward County or Trenton Memorial Hospital can go under the knife before there's no hospital left? The answer to that question is no more cuts, Mr. Speaker. Thank you. Third member statements. The member from London South. Uh, thank you, Speaker. This weekend, I had the pleasure of attending the first annual gala of the Western University Muslim Students Association, or MSA, at the London Muslim Mosque. The event brought together more than 100 young Muslims from the Western MSA, the Fanshawe MSA, the Oak Ridge MSA from my riding of London West, which is London's largest secondary school MSA, and many other students and community members. I rise today to applaud the efforts of these young people to raise awareness, promote cross-cultural understanding and challenge negative and dangerous stereotypes. Proceeds from the gala will be used to support the Western MSA Islam Awareness Week, an annual campus initiative held to encourage dialogue between Muslims and people of other faiths. Information booths, seminars and presentations by guest speakers are organized to highlight diversity within the Muslim community and dispel common misconceptions. With world attention focused on the horrific and brutal violence in Paris, the efforts of the Western MSA take on special significance. In order to stand strong in the face of terrorism, we must stand together across race, ethnicity, language, religion, and nationality to acknowledge the attacks in Paris and Beirut for what they are, a perversion of Islam, not a reflection. We can all take a lesson from the enthusiastic and dedicated young people who participate in Muslim student associations on campuses and in schools across Ontario. Understanding is the best and most effective way to prevent fear. I am proud to congratulate the Western MSA and to support them in their efforts. Thank you. Thank you. I uh, apologize for the member. I said uh, from London West, I said London South. There is no London South, it's London West. I apologize. Uh, further members, thank you. Glenn Gary Prescott Russell. Thank you, Speaker. Merci, uh, Monsieur le Président. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Last Saturday, I had the opportunity to be at the very first gala in recognition of people of Karen. Privilege to attend the first recognition gala in Ambrun in the great writing of Glenn Gary Prescott Russell. And it was a wonderful evening where collectively we gathered to celebrate the great work done by our community volunteers and to celebrate our local entre entrepreneurs and also to recognize community leaders. I want to congratulate all those who were nominated and specifically to those who won the award. The award for uh, accessibility in Ontario, Patrice Dagenet. Community, uh, community um, entrepreneurship. Smoothies, Ambassador of the Year, Jonathan Pitt. And speaker, instead of choosing one winner, to re uh, the, the, the review committee decided that all five nominees should win the Volunteer Community Service Award. So congratulations to Christian Thurkelson, Connie Johnson, Greg Rokosh, Judy McFall, and Mary Claire Ivansky. And speaker, we were thrilled to have with us a, as a guest speaker Jonathan Peet, uh, who also won the Perseverance Award. 15-year-old Jonathan suffers from a rare genetic condition, epidermolysis bullosa uh, EB, and he delivered an inspiring speech 
perfectly in both official languages. And so I want to congratulate Speaker, all the winners, and also to the Mayor, uh, Pierre Leroux, and to the Council of the Township of Russell for organizing such a lovely evening. Merci, Monsieur le Président. Merci. Member Stevens, the member for Lampton, Kent Middlesex. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Last week, three of my constituents earned well-deserved recognition for their accomplishments and service through their induction into the Kent Agricultural Hall of Fame. Rex Crawford is a farmer who has served his community in a wide variety of capacities, including as a member of parliament. In Dover, he farms some of the finest and most productive land in the country. Rex has grown corn, soybeans, oats and wheat, sugar beets and tobacco. Rex is also a conservationist and has served on the boards of both the St. Clair Region Conservation Authority and the Lower Thames Conservation Authority. I am proud to call Rex Crawford my friend and I congratulate him on his induction. Also inducted to the Hall of Fame were Bill and Diane Parks. Bill began as soil and crop specialist for the Ontario Ministry of Agriculture. Meanwhile, he and his wife Diane had already begun the cultivation of blueberries. They moved their plantation to its present site near Bothwell in 1979. In 1990, Bill and Diane created the famous Parks Blueberries and Country Store. Today, the Parks Store employs 10 workers full-time and 25 part-time. Bill was named Agriculturist of the Year by the Chatham-Kent Chamber of Commerce. Together, Bill and Diane were named Agriculture Innovators of the Year, and they have received a Lifetime Leadership Achievement Award from the Ontario Farm Fresh Marketing Association. On behalf of all constituents in Lambton, Kent, Middlesex, I'd like to congratulate all of the inductees in 2015. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. London, London Speaker, I rise today in celebration of the International Day of Persons with Disability, which will be held on December 3, 2015. The annual observance of the International Day of Disabilities, Disabled Persons was proclaimed in 1992 by the United Nations General Assembly. The observance of the day aims to promote an understanding of disability issues and mobilize support for the dignity, rights, and well-being of persons with disabilities. It also seeks to increase awareness of gains to be derived from the integration of persons with disabilities in every aspect of political, social, economical, and cultural life. Here in Ontario, while persons with disabilities are active and engaged in society, there continue to be many challenges they must overcome. There is the pressing issue of affordable housing with persons with development disabilities seeing long wait lists, which hurts not only these individuals, but also families who are trying to support their loved ones. Last week, the member from Essex raised the lack of enforcement of Accessibility for Ontarians with Disabilities Act, which for the past 10 years, this government has ignored. And finally, there is the issue of mental health. I am proud to have introduced my bill, which will address many issues in the mental health system and will alleviate much of the stigma that helps surround that surround mental health issues in this province. Speaker, it is my hope that on International Day of Persons with Disabilities that this government will finally give these individuals the respect they deserve. Thank you, Speaker. Thank you for the member statements. The member from Ottawa South. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. Christmas came early for Ottawa this year. November 22, 2015 will be forever etched in the heart, hearts of Red Black fans. A spectacular 93-yard Henry Burris to Greg Ellingson touchdown in the final minutes of the game secured a victory and ended a 34-year drought, great drought, drought for Ottawa. The sold-out crowd was treated to a great back-and-forth game of football. I was proud to be there with both my sons to watch the game. For years, Ottawa football—I can hear the Hamilton fans over there. They're still grumbling. For years, Ottawa football has brought our community and its people together. Felicitations, congratulations to Coach Campbell, to staff, the players, and to all those connected with the organization for making it to the Great Cup in your second year. Thank you to the Ottawa Sports and Entertainment Group and all their partners who worked so hard to realize the dream of bringing a team to Ottawa. The Red Blacks have been a great boost to Ottawa's community spirit. I know that all of Ottawa is behind our team and there'll be a lot of great cup parties this weekend. I look forward to watching the game at one of those parties. One more game. Go Red Blacks. Allez, rouge et noir. Merci, Mr. Speaker. Thank you. Further member statements, the member from Simcoe Red. Uh, Mr. Speaker, I rise today to encourage members of this House to observe Ontario's first Christmas Tree Day, which will take place on Saturday, December 5th. The uh, Christmas Tree Day Act, a bill supported by all parties of this House, received royal assent in June. 
making it Christmas Tree Day in Ontario the first Saturday in December each year. Yeah. Right. Aside from being part of our Aside from being part of our annual holiday tradition, Christmas trees make up an important part of our economy in Ontario. The $12 million industry involves 647 tree farms, producing over a million Christmas trees each year. This industry employs thousands of people in the agriculture, transportation, and retail sectors. While a key part of our agricultural sector, the crop plays an important role in the environment also. According to the Christmas Tree Farmers of Ontario, tree farmers Tree farms provide a stable refuge and feeding area for wildlife. Christmas trees also help remove carbon dioxide from the environment, and after the holidays, they can be used as mulch. Mr. Speaker, I'm asking all members to promote Christmas Tree Day to their constituents because of the important role these trees play in our lives. I would ask that members encourage people to buy a real tree to support our economy and the environment. In closing, I'd like to thank Mr. Fred Somerville of, the Summer of Somerville Nurseries and Mrs. Shirley Brennan of the Christmas Tree Farmers of Ontario for the work they do and for the assistance they provided to me so that Christmas Tree Day could become a reality in Ontario. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Further members' statements? Further members' statements? The member from uh, Northumberland, Quinty Oh, no. Sorry, Speaker. We're from Etobicoke Lakeshore. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. And uh, I rise today in the House to share with members uh, something about a tour of the Fiat Chrysler casting plant in Etobicoke Lakeshore that I enjoyed a few weeks ago. Uh, Mr. Speaker, this facility was built in 1942 for the war effort. It was purchased by Chrysler in 1954 uh, to make pistons and other engine components. During the 2008 uh, financial downturn, uh, the future of this plant was uncertain, but when Fiat bought it, they announced an investment of over $27 million uh, to bring in production uh, that would sustain the facility. In 2012, they had just over 200 employees. Today, they have over 530. Mr. Speaker, this is one of the plants in North America that has cutting-edge technology and it's actually employing people in highly skilled positions. That's where the growth in employment is. It's proof that innovation and success in Ontario are possible when we invest in our people. I'm so proud of this facility. The employees there are multi-generational. Some of their grandfathers work there. For a car plant, unusually, many of the employees actually walk to work uh, because they're part of the community. They contribute to community causes. And Mr. Speaker, they're an example that made in Ontario and the auto sector is world class. Thank you. Further member statements? The member from the public corner. Thank you, Speaker. Uh, I take this opportunity, Speaker, to rise and share some good news from uh, the great riding of Etobicoke North. There are a number of developments. Uh, first of all, of course, we're very proud to uh, be part of a massive expansion that's going to be taking place at Etobicoke General Hospital. Uh, we're not supposed to be talking about the dollar value, but, Speaker, I estimate it's going to be at least $200 million plus. We're tripling to quadrupling the floor space, the actual imprint of the hospital, and there's a number of new facilities that are coming online, new cardiorespiratory diagnostic unit, uh, massively expanded emergency room, birthing suites, uh, renal dialysis. Uh, maternal newborn care and so on and I look forward to of course being there for the uh, the opening we've already attended many many functions in terms of ribbon cutting and the the architectural plans and the groundbreaking etc but we look forward to when it actually uh, comes online to help the uh, uh, my residents and constituents in Tobacco North along with that speaker I'd like to share with you uh, an extraordinary development for Humber College again as I recall the development uh, the share of the Government of Ontario was something on the order of about $90 million, and it's a massive new, very elegant student centre. You'll be pleased to know, Speaker, that the, uh, the Eglinton LRT, uh, Finch LRT, actually is going to be uh, basically stopping at that. It's its final uh, endpoint terminus right in the great riding of Etobicoke North, and there's actually eight stops that are coming to Etobicoke North. So whether it's transport, education, or healthcare, Etobicoke North is on the move. Merci, Monsieur le Président. Thank you. Thank all members for their statements. It's